Good evening, Megan. How are you? Good. How are you, Jonathan? Looks like your uh, your your spirits are a little bit lifted there. You're smiling. That's good. <laughs> it's crazy town around here. Crazy town. So, um, you know, uh, for new people, right, that are just following your case, right? Can you just explain yeah. who you are and what is going on for the new people that are just like following your case for the first time? Yeah, of course. Um, and everyone's more than welcome to watch other interviews online and things. But, um, you know, of course, I am Megan Walsh. I'm the daughter of John Walsh from America's Most Wanted was his first television show. He currently has a show called In Pursuit with John Walsh. Uh, and I am the sister of Adam Walsh, who is the little boy that people remember that was kidnapped and murdered from the Sears department store in 1981 in Hollywood, Florida. Um, so that's me in a nutshell, as far as my background and my affiliations, um, mm -hmm. I am a mother of four that has recently had, uh, my father and others, uh, use CPS, DCF, child protective services, uh, to have my three children removed based on false allegations of mental illness, uh, and potential psychological abuse that is all unproven, um, and then now recently removing my five-day-old child and, and essentially kidnapping or stealing her from us um, at five days old. Uh, so that would be the current situation. Yeah. We can always find out about me later. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I've been following your case for anyone that jumps on uh, for the first time. You can review some of the videos I've been following you at court understanding the process, trying to get the message out there and try to get, you know, eyeballs on what's going on with you. Cause it doesn't seem like the mainstream media is taking this case at all. And it seems like more and more bad things are happening to you in reference to uh, your children and the whole entire, you know, CPS DCF process and your father part of it, trying to take your children away. Yeah, unfortunately, we have. It's been quite a year plus of terror and uh, threats and retaliation. And then with my children being dangled in front of me uh, while I'm being defamed and slandered and my entire life uh, being taken, you know, aside from the most important thing to me in the world, my children, you know, being my children. So um, that is terrifying. And, you know, things you, I can't thank you enough. Mm -hmm. And many of the other people who have shown up who have actually shown up and has supported and really exposed this situation um, one that affects you know tens of thousands across our country if not more um and is is getting more so by the day as as we always talk about so um yes there's been a media blackout on that i've yeah. said many uh times that you know where are the headlines even for you know john walsh has to save his grandchildren from mm -hmm. his crazy daughter you know, let's talk about that. But we see nothing. Uh, there's no comments from my father. I've received the silent treatment for over a year um, and different things to that effect. So um, I I will, as we know, and everyone that knows me, I've been speaking out. I will not mm -hmm. stop speaking out. I was an advocate, uh, you know, exposing the corruption within family court and CPS prior to this, my children ever being taken, which, you know, adds another thing to the main question, you know, why were they taken? There must yeah. be more to the story, all of this. Well, like I'm going to say time and time again to address that, you're absolutely right. There mm -hmm. is more to the story. And yeah. I hope that everyone looks into it. And I hope you start researching what CPS is really about, who John Walsh really is, how children are really taken. I really as we know, I've always tried to give action to that. But, um, you know, tonight I did want to make a, you know, I've, I've just yeah. did an, another show with Fran, um, Francesca Amato, and I will be going on another tonight. But I, I thank you so much for, yeah. for getting on and, and keeping up with with what we're what's going on with us. A Again, absolutely. Following yeah. us through the process. I mean, um, mm -hmm. so let's talk about the individual we're going to talk about tonight, MAGA Jackson. Maga Jackson, and he is the father to which one of your children? Uh, so Maga Jackson is actually baby Esther's father. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions about that. So I wanted to, 
you know, people want to know, like, of course they would, you know, where's the father? Who is he? Is he involved? And, you know, I, I'm here for transparency. We're trying to address each thing as it comes. I'm going through this with everyone else, truly. You know, I'm finding out new information each day. I'm experiencing hardships and, you know, hopeful blessings, you know, each day and just trying to move through that. But he, uh, you know, Maga Jackson is Esther's father. Mm -hmm. uh, he is in involved. Uh, we are absolutely united on this um, issue and, and the situation with our newborn daughter, our precious newborn daughter. And, you know, we are, we're not okay with this. We're absolutely not okay. Um, you know, he has known what's been going on. He has seen, you know, what, how my parents, you know, move and and how they you know do different things and and to achieve what they've done and so again the light is coming more the truth is coming out um more and more and and you know we are united on this we, this is about not just protecting our children and targeting our children mm -hmm. it's about keeping our families together and whatever that takes for the best interest of the child truly so you know? um with maga jackson um when and how did you meet him uh, MAGA and I actually met through the anti-trafficking, human trafficking effort um, through different organizations and different things like that. We had heard of each other. I knew about him for months prior, and, and eventually we ended up being able to meet up and, and get to know one another and, and, you know, try to join the effort together, um, despite whatever else was going on with my situation. So, so you had a daughter. Or were you guys in a relationship together? Uh, we were seeing each other. Yeah. We, you know, I think that I, I definitely, you know, everyone knows that everything was taken from me. I was definitely in trauma. Um, and I had, you know, been with these different organizations talking with everyone that I could being an advocate already. I was of course reaching out and, um, you know, they, they stepped forward and, and yes, we, you know, obviously hit it off and we are blessed through all of this craziness to have a beautiful, beautiful daughter, you know, to have been given that. So you guys are on good terms right now in unified in a, in, in a, in a cause to get your daughter back and your other children. Yes, absolutely. Um, we plan on, you know, focusing, of course, on the baby. She's down here. We we want to get her back so that she's safe because she is in foster care. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, uh, get the other three children back from my parents so they can't be abused anymore and that they're safe where they belong. They're, they're begging more and more every single time, crying. Everyone involved that's actually hands-on is so disturbed by the situation mm -hmm. and what these children are being put through. It is ungodly. And uh, again, this is the DCF lawyers, the judge, people that have never even seen my children in person, never seen us together, never seen me as a mother. And again, I am just an example of what goes on every single day across our country and our family courts and our dependency courts. Yeah. So with Maga Jackson, do you do you do you plan, you know, if you get your ch child back, which I hope you do, do you plan to like guys live together, have a relationship or raise a child or is this separate custody? How, how, how's it going to work? Well, you know, our relationship is completely separate than the best interest of our child and having her safe and home. So that is truly what we are stepping up to do. And the rest is, you know, is up to God. You know, we don't know how things will happen. And, you know, we we have things that we need to talk about as a family. But, you know, we have a child together that we are family and that will never change. And and I've always respected all of the fathers of my children. They've always, you know, if I am all for healthy parenting. And I don't care whether you I'm a, I'm done with this, you know, moms and debt, fathers rights movement, all this kind of stuff. We get it. We see everybody. You're all important. And healthy parenting is what is important. And we really need to grow up because in these situations in family court and CPS, these are adult situations and children are being exploited and used in this. And then other strangers are profiting from it and from our misery and from our pain and breaking and tearing us apart. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm going to go with, you know, what is being presented in front of me. I've always followed the Lord and, you know, I want the best for my daughter and I want the best for my other children. You know, that's always been my life. Yeah. So, um, you have three children or are, are they, um, each child from a separate father then, correct? 
Yes, they are. Um, mm -hmm. Does is the courts? Are they the other two fathers from your original children that were taken away? Are they stepping to the plate by you know filing anything with the courts or coming to the hearings, uh, court hearings? Are they trying to get custody themselves or trying to get custody with you of them? Or what 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 role are they playing here? Well, there is some ugly to it, and uh, that's another point that people keep asking, and I'm here to address that as well. We know what are the she's not divulging the case, and she's not talking about the case. This is an active case; it's a confidential case involving children. Um, I need to keep my children, you know, safe, and I've really tried not to speak on my children and that kind of a thing, as well as keep respect for the fathers, no matter how they're involved in this. They are all different fathers, so they all have different takes on this. Unfortunately, my daughter's father is, you know, being used and he took the bait and my parents are using him. And, and, that, and that would be who? Have... MAGA Jackson? No, my daughter's okay. father. And okay. I, I'm going to leave the names out for that. I mean, the yeah. people know the other two. Um, my two of, you know, Esther's father is MAGA Jackson and Arlo's father is Warren Trotter with uh, Kanye West. But um, that's because they're in, you know, they're out in the public. They are somewhat public figures. Um, the others I do want to keep respect for and, and keep them, you know, to themselves and, and we'll figure that out. But, um, but no, they have gone to my oldest father. They are using him. It's horrific. I wish he would have chosen a different way. I wish he would have called me, uh, and said, you know, Hey, I think about Ava every day. Um, you know, is there a way I could get in her life? And with everything going on with my family, especially now, of course, I would have said, you know, come to start coming to a meal here, or there, let's, you know, work it in and, and do this the healthy way for, for our daughter. Um, you know, the uh, Arlo's father, Warren Trotter, yes, we're on the same good terms. Again, if things don't work out with, you know, with a father, then they live their life. And if they're living a healthy life, that is a good role model and, a, you know, a good you know, a uh, person in society, they're providing for their child, they're showing up, not leaving them on the stoop, waiting, you know, things like that, then I, I have no problem with a father. Of course, you would want that in your child's life. You know, that's what we yeah. should all want. If if someone is trying to take a, a parent completely from their child, that's an abuser. That's not that's not a child. That's not a good parent. That's an or a healthy parent. That's an abuser. Um, mm -hmm. Every child needs their parents. And in unfortunate situations when, you know, one parent isn't involved, that's that that's not a good thing. You know, that's not a welcomed yeah. thing. That's not ideal. So, um, you know, we, again, are putting any relationship, any anything at this point behind us. And uh, and I'm I'm very happy about that. I feel in a good place about that. Um, and through these huge, you know, storms and and horrific things that have happened, you know, my children are what matters. A good relationship with their fathers is what matters. Um, and and I'm going to sit in this moment, especially on Father's Day. So, yeah. you know, I, I I want to give, you know, wish everyone out there, all the amazing fathers that step up, you know, those that they aren't their biological children or different things, even of that nature, and just really applaud those those men in our society and, and say thank you. So I, I definitely well said. And I definitely um, see you in better spirits. You know, a, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, the trauma of having your five day old baby, you know, snatched out of your arms, you know, and it, it seems like you're surrounding yourself with good people, having faith in God, and you are optimistic about, you know, your, all three of your children being returned to you. Um, last week we spoke and, you know, uh, a couple people that were there at the house the day uh, they came and took your daughter away. They got arrested. Uh, what, what's going on with that? And you actually feared that you might be next being arrested. Do you know anything more about that? Uh, yeah, they did. And and I haven't spoken a lot on that because they are criminal cases. So this is getting more complicated by the day and, you know, less stuff that we, you know, really want to talk about. And that's not mine to speak on. But yes, they were, you know, arrested. Everyone knows that. That's public knowledge. Um, I have since, you know, now I'm back to finding housing for my children. And I right after they did a home study. Um, you know, this is, again, what CPS likes to do. They keep adding to the case plan or they come up with something. Um, again, you know, they've known for months that I was pregnant. They never had to do even that day. Bureaucracy, you know, they never red tape, red tape, bureaucracy. They're making hurdles 
to make it harder for right. your or hoping possibly that you slip or mess up to use that as justification uh, to keep, you know, that's a tactic that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is known how they, how they roll and operate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're holding any funding for me that I have, uh, you know, to reestablish myself. They're doing all of that. And, you know, MAGA again is, is really staying in the background so that we can do what we have to do legally and focus, you know, we're, I've also seen people say if she would focus on the kids, um, or the legal stuff, she would have had them back by now. You know, no one knows what we're doing. You know, no one knows the insides of how we are fighting directly for the children and, and whether I've done a case plan or not, that is, you know, done. I hate to tell everybody. Um, and we just need to wake up to the realities of this system and yeah. how it works and instead of blaming individuals who are in trauma and who have had their children torn from them. Um, you know, I have given full transparency this entire time. As you mentioned, people have seen me moments after mm -hmm. coming out of court. And, uh, and you know, we're going to have ups and downs in all of this. And as, as you say, you know, I am in better spirits. A day ago wasn't that way. And, and you know, it's not to say that I wasn't in um, good spirits, but you just don't know what this – you know, emotions. these kinds of things are going to bring you. Emotions yeah. are yeah. natural, you know, and they just come and you're showing, you know, your natural reaction, which any mother would do uh, if their child was taken from them. You know, for anyone that says, oh, you know, uh, you know, you hear some critics that say, you know, bad things about you, you know, and say, you know, you're not mentally fit and things like that. But, you know, they're not in your shoes. They, you know, and you know, yeah. having a mother taken away, that's your that's your baby yeah. cubs. That's your baby yeah. cubs. Of course, you'll you'll be erratic and all types of roller coaster emotions having your own child taken away. But as we speak, spoke, speak numerous times, I mean, you're always coherent and rational and thoughtful and kind and respectful, you know, and, and that's your yeah. character. So hopefully the courts get to see your true character, not a one sided version from the CPS side, you know, to try mm -hmm. to make you out like a monster or unfit or whatnot. You know, uh, they need to see the real Megan. Oh, yeah. I, and I thank you for that because and I always give credit where it's due, Jonathan and the people. It's been actually amazing now that we've gotten new caseworkers, you know, new people, fresh eyes on this case that weren't the original conflicted people injuring us. Um, it They really have stepped up. The people that are actually hands on. Uh, with us and with, like me and my children, in other words, do see this and they've been very vocal about the fact that they are not okay with this. Um, it is, as we again say and see, it is the higher ups and they don't think that they need to, you know, abide by things or answer or, you know, be held accountable. So again, I I'm, hate to have to be the bad guy to point that out, but mm -hmm. it shouldn't have to be that oppositional. This should be something that, you know, if you're in this position or in this, this field of work, that that should be your goal and your concern as well, that it's all held account, everyone's held accountable, that this is absolutely diligent dealing with our children and the lives of our children, you know. Do you think so. you hit rock bottom with this situation right now, or do you think you're, you're, you're rising above it, or do you think more bad things are going to come, or what, what, what's your thought on, thoughts on that? No, I mean, I, I definitely, we have huge hope. I mean, yeah. this has been, people have been fighting in this for decades and, you know, not just my story, but in the world as in humanity, we have never been more aware of what's going on. We've never seen more literal, uh, you know, definitions and in our face examples of what child trafficking is, the different ways that it happens. Um, and I have huge hope. I mean, every day we're speaking out and yes. the more that someone in their own community talks to a handful of people, then that spreads and people, you know, I'm, I want people to ask questions. Yeah. I want people to doubt what I'm saying. I want people to do that kind of thing, because that is what provokes action. That's what's yes. going to get people to look into stuff. That's what is going to get conversation started because we're all right now kind of suckers taking the bait, you know, with all due respect of division, you know, and we do have this issue like, okay, if you don't believe it, then look up statistics, look up children, look up trafficking, look up whatever you want to look up. But now, then once you realize the reality of this, because it is the reality of it, then how do we come together and how do we talk about the differences of opinion and the differences of approaches and perspectives and actually just, you know, it, it's going to take work. No one's saying that it's easy, but this is not working anymore. We have to swallow our pride 
and just admit that we have allowed a system that does not serve as it should. And there's many better ways that we can actually do it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Have you reached out to uh, or do you plan to reach out to Governor Ron DeSantis about this issue? I mean, we've reached out to him and he's silent on it. And uh, I never thought, you know, people can think what they want to, but I'm making a point here. I never thought that I would be ignored, uh, you know, dealing with such a serious issue, uh, being who I was, you know, or not even who I am, but, you know, dealing with who it is, being my father. Um, and I really thought that he was someone that was very vocal about not, you know, tolerating corruption and really protecting our children and stuff. And again, I'm sick of being the bad guy. It's time for people to step up to the plate and actually be doing something. It's in our face. We know a huge way to stop, a, you know, a large portion of this issue in our country. Yeah. And we've seen uh, your father, John, get a lot of pre preferential treatment. When it came, comes to the courthouse, you know, he doesn't even have to go through the front metal detectors, you know, he just gets ushered through the back into a courtroom close to the public, you know, and then ushered out, you know, he, they're, they're giving him special treatment in, in this. It yeah. must frustrate you. Yeah. Well, and people going like, oh, you know, but it's the law and, and who cares who John Walsh is and all this stuff. And, and I get that. I wish that that was true. I think I absolutely agree with you. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, this is like a cult following. People really don't understand. My father, law enforcement, admires and idolizes my father. That's just the way it is for many people in law enforcement um, and then in CPS and anything dealing with children and protecting children, legislation, um, all of that. You know, my father is affiliated with almost every agency and, and very powerful people. As John, um, as John given uh, um, any statements, your father, about this issue? I tried reaching out to him. I actually have his number and his email oh, you did. and he doesn't he doesn't wow. respond. I'm just wondering, has anyone like, you know, asked him or does, has he made any kind of public statement about this matter? You know, my dad and I used to text all the time, which is another thing. It's very interesting that everything was fine for, you know, I was a mother for almost 10 years and there was never any issue. Everything was fine until, you know, I started speaking out or asking questions and different things. Um, but, you know, I have messaged him. He does not reply to me at all for a year. He has not replied. Um, Why is and that? Is there because maybe a gag order with the courts or the courts telling him not to or is he just don't want to? I don't know. I mean, isn't it they tell your lawyer? I mean, I don't know, because the only thing that I remember is him being on television when the laundries weren't speaking and he was accusing them of being guilty of something or, yeah. you know, being involved. So. So it's hit home and now know, he's definitely. quiet on his own home issue. He doesn't want to speak about it when people uh, reach out. Hopefully, maybe some local media down there will report your case. But, you know, again, I've, I've been at your court hearings numerous times and I haven't seen one mainstream media people there. And I think it's important to get this yeah. out there. Not only that, but just the whole DCF CPS process and how they oh, yeah. just can strip, you know, a child away from a mother's arms just by the stroke of a pen of a judge. It's scary. Yes. It is very scary. It is very scary. And it's something that we all need to be concerned about. If it hasn't affected you, it's affected somebody that you know, or a relative, or it could possibly affect you in the future, especially if you want to raise your children traditionally, uh, you know, things of that nature that it's, you know, we need to be concerned about this. And, and it's, again, not to fear monger, it's to empower people to come together and end the abuse that is trafficking our children and ripping our families apart. This is not... You know, I, I giggle because it's so simple. It's actually we're being handed, you know, something to stop and that we actually have the power to end. Yeah, absolutely. So what's next? When When's the next court hearing? What, what do you have coming up? Do they have a hearing coming up or anything? You, you know, I have to I have to look on my email. Honestly, I've been up to date on everything until, you know, the past couple of weeks. Um, we've really just been with everything with the arrests and the removal and Esther. It's really been a nonstop whirlwind, a roller coaster, if you will. So um, I will keep everyone updated. I'll message you and let you know when the next court date is. I definitely um, like the to be there to attend for sure. Yeah. The trial is the end of July. It's scheduled for the end of July. Um, we're all praying for this new court appointed attorney. I know what everyone's going to say, but, you know, we 
we really need, we still need an attorney. So if anyone knows people that, you know, would have the courage and, and wants yeah. to stand for what's right, it's actually a great opportunity. You I, know, you can really set an example and, and bring these beautiful children home and show others how to do this with grace and truth and, and just, you know, do what's right. Justice. That's it. Absolutely. How can people reach you if they want to hear more about you or get a hold of you? What's a good way to get a hold of you? Well, um, a lot of people know that I'm on Twitter. That's really where I've been keeping everything uh, kind of funneling. Uh, it's Megan Walsh underscore uh, on Twitter, which is M-E-G-H-A-N-W-A-L-S-H underscore. Um, and and you can message me there. You can comment. If you can't message, you can comment me and I uh, to me on my page and I will get back to you. Um, of course, you know, I have wonderful people like Jonathan, um, Fran, Penny Shepard, uh, Emma on Twitter, a lot of great people that you can always reach out. Um, I think a lot of people know who is now on my team yes. and who's affiliated and working behind the scenes. You know, we have a lot of people working behind the scenes, which has been amazing. And we welcome more all the and, time and supporters so. of yours i noticed if you put your name in the um the youtube search you put megan walsh or john walsh combined and there's a lot of videos coming up you know from youtube creators yep. and people just you know just the grassroots supporting you and, and sharing what's going yeah. on and you yeah know, that, that's been... important too you know because you want you know megan's army out there we, we we are your army and we are going to back you through this process we're going to share what goes on open transparency and, uh, you know, get truth and justice out there. Amen. Amen, Jonathan. I think that that is, will set and empower us to do so many other things that are going wrong now and that we just need to address as a society so we can be happier, we can do better, you know, all of that. So I thank everyone that's really, you know, stood behind us and everyone just joining the fight. I know that it's so much and, and I apologize for laying it on, on everybody, but you know, these are the realities of our lives. This is what people are dealing with every day. We're here reporting it. We're here, you know, exposing it. We're here talking about it. Um, and we really appreciate everyone that shows up. I know Jonathan, you have, you know, an amazing audience and, and we couldn't do it without that so um again i want to thank, thank everyone you. for just supporting and and you know happy father's day happy father's and, day for uh, sure uh stay yeah, optimistic yeah. we'll, we'll be in touch i'm yeah. glad i'm glad yeah, I'm, I'm seeing you you know you 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 look more colorful you know under the circumstances uh you know just stay strong i will be praying for you and i do pray for you every day you know i include you in my morning mm -hmm. prayer you know i want this uh resolution that you know you need your children back in your hands you know, every day that your children are away from you, it's just, it could be detrimental to their long-term mental and physical health. And Absolutely. I mean, brain damage and everything, but I'll never stop showing up. You know, I, I get up and fighting. we show up and, and we do, we have to, we don't have a choice. And, and I will, again, like I've always said, keep doing this, you know, even once my children are home until this is corrected and until this is stopped. So um, I know a lot of people feel that way. So thank you, Jonathan, always, and, and for your platform and, and everyone that comes to support you as well. So thank you. All right. We will be praying for you. Thanks. And uh, I'll get back to you on new updates. Keep me informed and we'll share it out. Uh, anyone just, yeah. you know, Google Megan Walsh, John Walsh, do the YouTube searches, do the Twitter searches, follow this case. It's very important people because Megan is suffering right now. And, you know, if it goes with Megan, the next, it'll be the next mother and the next mother and the next, next mother. And, you know, this is, this is, this seems like it's a problem in this, in this country, in every state. It needs to be talked yes. about. It needs to be exposed. It needs to be shared. Yes. And we have a lot of children to find through this system too. You know, we can't forget the ones that are missing or, you know, have been murdered or, you know, all of the abuse that goes on. We really just have to address it. I, I actually, yeah. over the weekend, I was out in Tennessee uh, looking for Summer Wells. I was actually in the mm -hmm. mountains. Uh, a neighbor of Summer Wells who's just fed up with the situation, knows the parents are guilty of something, uh, took mm -hmm. me back there in the holler. And I'll tell you, it was like dangerous terrain out there. I mean, it was, you know, rolling hills, creeks, snakes, uh, mud. It, it was very dangerous. But, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do, you know, I'm invested in that case. And just, you know, there's summer wells needs to be found, you know, and uh, there's a lot of missing children that need to be found, you know, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of them don't get the media exposure like other cases. Uh, hopefully, you know, your supporters, my supporters can start sharing about other people that are missing and, and get their mm -hmm. get their message out there. I think it's important to bring awareness to the children. You know, our children are, are 
future generation. They're important. Yeah. They matter. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're talking about protecting our children. That's why I say protecting our children, because it's not just save our children, you know, do these different things. That's true. But this is about protecting our children from now on and into the future. And there are so many different ways. So, you know, big pharma and, you know, CPS, I mean, CPS is one, you know, we're taught, we're tackling the big beast, the big giant first, that's really outrightly damaging and terrorizing our children and our families. But there are so many other aspects of this and so many other cases, you know, that we will continue to, you know, to address Amen. and and peacefully, you know, we're here just to do what's right. So thank you for always sticking with it. You know, people give up on stuff after a while. We know the attention spans these days, but, yeah. you know, we really do need people and we have people that really stick by cases and stick by families going through it and individuals going through it. And again, our children are really who's suffering the most. This, this entire system and these situations um, even in our efforts to stop them really, you know, negate a lot of the perspective of the children being put through it and what they experience every day. So yeah. I really just always want to keep the focus on that and, and uh, really use that to empower us to, to get it done and to get it moving. So it's time. Yeah. And you thank spent, you. yeah, thank you. And you spent 30 minutes sharing this. So 30 minutes of your time, really appreciate it. You know, uh, praying for you. I'm sure my supporters are majority praying for you. And, you know, we're going to create an army and uh, follow your case through. God bless you. We'll talk Thank soon. You. Thank you, Jonathan. God Thank bless you. You're me. welcome. Bye-bye, Megan. Bye-bye. So that was Megan Walsh. Uh, spoke to her. Follow her case, everyone. Follow Megan Walsh's case. Just Google her. M-E-G-H-A-N-W-A-L-S-H. Uh, you could slash it with John Walsh, a combination of both. Uh, this is a serious issue going on down in Indian River County, Florida, which is Vero Beach. And it's it's just, it's sad. It's sad to see Megan, you know, just give, you know, her two children taken away. And she's going through the whole process trying to get custody of her two children. And then she has another child. And then five days after her daughter was born, they're coming knocking on the door, the sheriffs, Indian River County sheriffs and, you know, DCF, CPS, whatever you want to call them, uh, to take the child away because a judge signed to have the child taken away, you know, five days after giving birth. Imagine that. Imagine you were in Megan's shoes. It's, it's, it's traumatizing, can do nothing but pray. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this interview. Stay strong, everyone. God bless.